An electric fence has three main components. The energizer, the earth or ground, and the fence line. If any of these components are not working properly, then the whole system will be compromised. For an electric fence to give a shock, the circuit needs to be closed. This is why a bird can sit on a live wire and not get shocked, because there is no path to ground. If a larger animal touches the fence, then it closes the circuit, because the current can now travel through it to the ground, through the earth to the energizer earth stakes, and finally back to the energizer. This completes the circuit, so that the animal will get a shock. Since this circuit relies on the conductivity of the soil, different soil conditions can make a difference to how well it works. If our fence is in a high rainfall area near the coasts, the soil is likely to be a good conductor. Then something as large as a bull or even a rhino can get a sufficient current through it to register as a large shock. In drier or arid areas, the soil conditions can be far less favourable. Then an animal can test the fence and not register much of a shock at all. This is because the current is struggling to make it back to the energizer through the earth. The animal could get a weak shock and it will be pretty ineffective against a large animal like this. Most inland areas in Australia have low conductivity soils. To help improve the circuit, we can add earth return wires to the fence. If an animal continues to push against the fence wires and touches both the live and the earth wire simultaneously, the current will then return much more effectively along the earth wire back to the energizer, resulting in the animal getting the full force of the shock between the wires, stopping him in his tracks. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe so you can watch the rest of this series and see our other great videos.